Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the ICE Professional Review Day, or better known as your interview day. I'm aware that because of COVID, it's kind of changed to an online interview, but I think it follows a very, very similar format. And that format is a 15 minute presentation followed by an interview, which lasts around 75 minutes. And then it's followed by a written exercise. So your presentation, which lasts for 15 minutes, you're going to need to prepare a PowerPoint presentation if you're doing it online, or if you're able to do it face to face, then you'll need to prepare some slides, print it out, and you'll probably want to put them in some sort of A4 or A3 folder. I'd recommend if you're gonna print them out that you do it in A3 so that the pictures that you show are nice and clear and large. Your presentation is going to be about your project, which you already wrote about in your sort of 5,000 word report. But think of it as an extension to that report and that you're not repeating too much from your report because they've already read it. What you want to do in your presentation is sort of highlight other things which you have done on a project which you didn't write in your report. So say for instance you were lacking in substance in some of the attributes in your report. Your presentation is a great way to sort of bolster that attribute. Don't try and cover all your attributes in your presentation. You won't have time. And also try not to think too much about your attributes. This is a test to see how well you communicate. So when you're presenting, make sure that you're clear, concise, that you use big, clear slides in your presentation. When you're making your presentation slides, make sure you use big photos, diagrams, sketches, anything which you've done. Site photographs are great for putting into presentation slides. Try and not to use too many words on your slides. You want the examiner to be listening to you instead of reading what's on your slide. Also, if you put too many words on your slides, you might have a tendency to try and read off the slide and then not presenting. So in my experience, I try to minimize the amount of words I put on the presentation and just limit it to just photos, diagrams, and sketches. The presentation is 15 minutes long for a reason. So you need to make sure that you practice your timing and it's a test of your time management skills. It's better to come slightly under 15 minutes than going over time. Remember to always practice your presentation I remember when I was practicing my presentation, I was pretty much hitting 15 minutes bang on. I knew that, however, when I was presenting in real life, I tend to speak a little bit quicker. So I was really confident that I wasn't gonna go over time. This might vary between people, so make sure that you practice. Don't just practice by yourself. Have a mock presentation or a mock interview. That way you can try and present and do the interview in a sort of real life test. So after the presentation, you'll have your 75 minute interview. And this is the place where people are either gonna pass or fail. It's unlikely that you'll fail the written exercise. And I don't think many people will probably fail the presentation. It's going to be down to the questioning and the grilling, which you'll get from the examiners. So the interviewers are going to grill you and ask you loads and loads of questions. And they'll have a checklist or the attribute list in front of them. And they'll be ticking them off making sure that they've asked you everything about your attributes based on the projects and your presentation. Try and stay calm when you're answering your questions. Take your time. If the examiners find that you're struggling, they're going to try and ask you in a slightly different way to try and prompt or tease out an answer for you. Never just say that you don't know how to answer a question. If you're going to say no, say no, but then follow up with this, but this is how I would do it or this is how I would go about doing something. At the beginning of the interview stage, they're probably going to ask you questions about your presentation because that's probably the thing which is going to follow on first. Make sure that you can answer anything which you've shown on your presentation. If you don't want to be asked a certain thing on your presentation, then don't put it in your presentation. It's that obvious. If you don't show it, they can't ask you questions on it. Learn the ICE code of conduct. I learned it the night before my exam and then I pretty much forgot them all when I left the interview. Know your projects inside and out, back to front. If you haven't written your report yet, make sure you choose a project which I think covers from the scheme stage all the way to construction stage. That way you have a really, really good knowledge of all the engineering decisions that went on during the project. And when it comes to the interview, when you get asked about decisions made during the project, you're going to have first-hand knowledge of all of this, which is going to make answering these questions that much easier. Be confident when you're giving your answers. The interviewers are going to try and find cracks in your answers and they're going to keep grilling and grilling you. But don't stray away from your answer if you think you're correct and you know your stuff. You shouldn't be too shaken from it. 
this is you know a hard interview and they're going to try and break you but be confident stand your ground and you'll be all right when i did my exam the first time round, i was really really nervous probably because i wasn't prepared enough and i wasn't too confident and it's probably why i failed the second time round, i was much more confident and i kind of felt that i breezed the interview afterwards like i really felt that there wasn't anything that they could have failed me on the health and safety attribute is probably one of the most important things because if you get the health and safety thing wrong, they're going to fail you straight out. There's no ambiguity about it. If you say something wrong about health and safety, that's probably it. It's probably game over. So make sure you know your health and safety stuff, your risk assessments, your CDMs. Make sure you know it all and become really, really well prepared. So after you've had your interview, you'll be given a time slot for when you need to sit your written exercise. And it's actually changed now. Before it was a two hour written exercise and it was a, like an essay. And now it's kind of changed to a one and a half hour written exercise. And it's still, you still get a choice of two questions, but the way you approach it is slightly differently. And obviously I don't have experience with this new system, but I think it's fairly similar in the way that you want to approach and tackle it. What they're really trying to test you on is how you are able to take a bit of information, digest it, form your own opinions, and then write clearly in a way that's you know neatly and organized. I personally think that the written exercise is a really hard thing to fail on. So I wouldn't worry too much about it and get some practice in, but I think the thing you want to practice in is practicing how to spend the first five to 10 minutes brainstorming or structuring your written exercise. And I think the first five, 10 minutes where you draw a mind map, try and think of different topics that you want to talk about and then try to structure it in some way. That way, when you're writing your essay or whatever format you're trying to write it in, you can strike off all the things which you've done and that you're not repeating yourself and to make sure that it's always structured because that's what they're really, really testing you on. Also remember, it's about quality, not quantity. It's really not about how much you write, but more how you go about writing it. You should get your results in roughly six weeks after you've sat the exam. So for those who are gonna be taking it soon, Good luck and all the best. Remember that even if you fail the first or the second time, you can always try again. I failed my first time and I was really, really down about it, but I bounced back and I managed to do it the second time round. Failing an exam doesn't make you any less of a person or any less of a good engineer. So don't let that phase you. Great engineers, which I've known, have failed their exam the first or the second time. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's just an exam. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.